It is the Victoria Washington experience, and I'm excited. I have this gentleman in, in the studio with me right now. It's awesome because I've seen him over Instagram, Twitter. He's killing the social media, Facebook, and everyone loves him. He's an author, an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, philanthropist, and he is affectionately known as the heart healer. I love that because when people read his quotes, it instantly heals people's heart. Um, he also has two books about something real and for single people who still understands the value of relationships. Y'all, please help me welcome Rob Hill Sr. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. I, I, thank you for being here. Of course. I of appreciate course. it. Of course. <laughs> so Rob Hill Sr., the motivational speaker, he's in the studio with me right now. And he's cut the beard down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm you trying know. to lose a little weight. So I feel like a Show my face a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it makes you look slimmer. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was cool to have it thick and all of that stuff, but sometimes I like to cut it down. To switch it's it up. Cool. Yeah, okay, switch okay. it up a little bit. Sexual chocolate is in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I'm like, I'll man, take that. Do, do, do people look at you and say, oh, sex simple? I don't, I, I used to say that. No, nah, I was joking <laughs> around. But no, nah, people, they, they show love. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the girls, uh, I think it's because of, you know, who I am and what I do, uh -huh. that's toned down a little bit. They never want to come off like that girl. Right. So they'll say, oh, you're handsome. Or, you know, you know, I'm nice eyes or something like that. And I appreciate it all. No, they, because they already know you've been through that, especially with the quotes and stuff. Right. So they know you pulling them. So you're not used to, I mean, you're already <laughs> used to the craziness. So they yeah. trying to control themselves. Yeah, they're like, you know? uh, no, Rob's a certain way. So I have to be, you know, that way. So, yeah. Right. Uh, Women throwing it at you? It, 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 it we, let's, uh kind of break down what throwing it is now I, I i get my fair share of pursuers i would say mm -hmm. um I'm sure but i think that just comes from more so being you know well known you mm -hmm. know or having that platform okay. um so and i understand that what i represent um you know what i speak on may be attractive to a lot of people so you know i understand it but i'm not uh feeding into it too much i got you yeah okay. I'm, ha I'm happy where i'm at right now okay i'm speaking with rob hill senior um I always hear you talk about in your interviews of when you were 18 or 17, mm -hmm. you, you were homeless. Yep. Um, but I never hear you actually go into like how that whole situation played out. Well, I, um, I, uh, I grew up in Chesapeake, Virginia. It was just me, my mom and my older sister. Uh, when I was about 11, she got married uh, and we did a lot of moving, like literally between that age and 17, we went to North Carolina. We went to San Pedro, California. We went to Baumholder, Germany. We went to um, Fort Mom of Central Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then we moved back to Chesapeake. And it was hard adjusting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I was extremely adventurous, uh, risky um, in a lot of areas. And it was hard adjusting. Okay. Um, so I bumped my head a lot, but I also broke a lot of rules as far as my parents' household, as far as the stuff that they demanded and asked of me. Um, and, and I just thought I was smarter than everybody. I thought I was mm -hmm. smarter, like more like the stuff that they was telling me, it's just stuff y'all supposed to say, you know, and, and right. I would compare myself to people who were worse. Like, at least I'm not doing that. At least I'm not doing that. And they're like, look, we got rules. We established this and these rules will carry you far if you decide to listen to them. Nah, <laughs> I was like, I got my own rules, right. you know, I got my own rules. So um, I put them in a position to where they had to make a choice, you know, our family or, you know, the person who's disrupting this household, you know, because the stuff that we're not islands, everything we do affects other people. So the stuff that I was doing was sending a bad message to my sisters, you know, but also it was just flat out disrespectful. Um, so I respect my parents for um, having enough strength to say, hey. You can't come back here right now until you decide to do, you know, right. What kind of stuff were you doing? Like, were you just, slapping them? What nah, was I wasn't, it wasn't even <laughs> slapping them. It was just they, they had simple rules. Like, look, if a curfew was 2 o'clock, mm -hmm. I'm not coming in until tomorrow, you know? Wow. Or, 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 like, it, it's, it's just literally simple rules that I was just completely blatantly disrespectful, you gotcha. know? And it wasn't like, oh, I was robbing stores and blah, blah, blah. But they didn't know what I was doing. Because I was, I did not abide to anything. You get what I'm saying? Okay. And I remember one time I didn't have a license or anything like that. Driving a person's car, getting an accident. That that person drive, was driving a Lexus. Mm -hmm. You know, their parents had, you know, well off. They had a Lexus. I crashed it. 
no permit, no license, no nothing. So, of course, who does that fall on? My parents. Right. You know, so I'm costing the household money. I'm, it, it, these experiences that I was doing was just really adding a lot more stress than it was. And it was clear that I wasn't, you know, trying to get with it with the program. Um, and, and it hurt me moving forward, even when I got out of their house and I started school um, at Norfolk State in 2005. Um Literally, I flunked out the first semester. No discipline, no anything. And and mm. that's when I was I was literally drinking every day. Like, I've always had facial hair. Like, I had a goatee connect when I was a senior in high school. Mm. Um, so I looked a little older. You know, you go to, like, a little A-Rab store. They'll let you buy alcohol or something like that. Mm. So, you know, I go. I'm just living my life trying to be as grown as possible for no reason. You know what I mean? Right, but right. Uh, completely unaware of what grown meant. Um, and I guess when I, I got locked up, I... I just did some dumb stuff, you know, a lot of dumb stuff. And every time, you know, thank God for the type of parents I've had because they always lead with love. It was never, uh, you stupid, you know what I mean? They would tell you about yourself and let you know, you know, but uh, luckily I didn't have to make, I made a lot of different mistakes, not all of the same ones over and over again. So are you still in contact with your parents? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a they great relationship? They are incredible. The most amazing grandparents to my son who's six. Um, but... Like I said, they always led with love. And when I started getting my life back in order, um, it was because of the lot, a lot of the tools and principles they had put in me early on, things that I didn't appreciate. Um, so it it was, um, it, I won't say it was easy, but I knew it was right for me to go and then apologize. Like, look, you know, this is where I'm trying to go, you know, and and, and they were gracious enough, you know, to accept. They've made mistakes in their life too. Of course, you know they 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 understood what it was like to be where I was. Now, granted, they may not have pushed the envelope as much as I did, but they they understood. You know, they got it, um, and, and they loved me. You know, mm, as yeah. good parents should. Hey, they they, they, <laughs> they loved me. They loved me. You mentioned your son. Um, if I don't know anything about you besides being the heart healer, I know that you love your son. Yeah. You're, you're always on social media and you mention your son all the time. Mm -hmm. You care about your son, mm -hmm. like the heart healer and son, yeah. heart healer, son, <laughs> son, heart healer. And I'm like, you know, the, this is his focus. These yeah. two things here, these are his focus. Uh -huh. So tell me, how was that like a breaking point for you when you had your son? He, he, he saved my life. You know, he mm. saved my life. He he really, really saved my life. Him and my mom's love. You know, I, I, I attribute where I am a lot to them. Um, my son woke me up. He gave me a lot of focus. Um, when I was, um, I want to say 18, uh, about mm -hmm. to turn 19, I lost my best friend. He passed away in a car accident. Um, it hurt me, you know what I mean? Like in a lot of, and my life was already up and down. Right. So it really made me spiral even more, you know what I mean? I'm drinking more, wanting to smoke, wanting to, you know, chase this, do all these things. Um, and when I found out I would be a father, it scared me to death. It's, I don't have the closest relationship with my biological father. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, when I was growing up, before I got a stepfather, I was just like, yo, I'm going to be this type of dad. I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to always be there. I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I found out I would become a father, I was in no position to do any of that. You know? And, and I knew it. And the worst thing I wanted was for him to look at me and see somebody he wasn't proud of. For him to look at me and see somebody that he couldn't aspire to be like. Um, and that enough motivated me as a person. And I was like, look, college suck. I'm not doing well. I ain't doing nothing else. I'm going to join the Navy. You know what I mean? I'm mm. about to get my stuff together and set a solid foundation for us. Right. You know, and that's that's just my lifeline. I love my son. You know what I mean? I, I love being a father. To me, being his father, that's a gift. You know, so I try to honor it in what I do. You know, and I, I just want my life to be a message. So anything I do, I want him, like, I believe, we believe uh, what we can accomplish based off what we've seen be done, right? Okay. So he will never believe his dreams are unrealistic. He saw me go for mine. He's seen me fight for mine. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I want our life, you know, excuse me, my life to be that message to him. Um, so that's why I go so hard, and that's why I try to include him in everything that I do. I want him to understand. If you ask him what he's going to be when he grow up, you know, what he's going to do, he's going to say, I'm going to make the world smile. Mm. So he doesn't have to be a doctor. He doesn't have to be a lawyer. He doesn't have to be a writer. He doesn't have to be a basketball player. He doesn't have to be anything. He just has to be somebody who contributes some value to this world. And, you know what I mean, that that's my own philosophy for us. Right. You know. Okay. So speaking of a message, what message are you trying to actually get out 
to everyone like myself. Um, I, I really think love just wins. Um, and, and I think that my life has shown that, but, and I say that simple and uh, some may call it cliche or common sense, but I, I needed to feel that simple in order for people to apply it the way they should. Um, love keeps us open-minded. It keeps possibilities in front of us. It keeps us, um, not bogged down from fear and all these other things when it's actually right. Um, and I want people, particularly in this generation to just open up. Everybody's so guarded. Everybody has this shell. Everybody's right. so tough. Everybody's so, uh, you know what I mean? So, and I say this often, everybody's so focused on being hurt that nobody's being themselves. You know, nobody's actually willing to take that mask off and say, look, what you did hurt my feelings. I'm not saying it broke me. It hurt my feelings. I want you to be aware that it hurt my feelings. So if you really care about me, you'll protect me, you know what I mean, from right. now on. But that just takes too much effort. Nobody wants to let anybody know that they got to them. But in invert, it's like, the only emotion this generation is willing to show is anger. That's true. That's like the only one that we voluntarily express, you know, anger, because it's the easiest. There's mm -hmm. no responsibility in anger. You know what I mean? You could just get mad, throw something, do something, you know what I mean? Say something, all this stuff. And at the end of the day, there's no accountability in it. So from your from your messages, I'm assuming that you've been hurt before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is that how you became the heart healer? Well, I, I think that my pain, the things that I experienced, whether it be um, heartache, um, or whether it be disappointment or whether it be all these different things, mm -hmm. I internalized a lot of it, you know, um, and it made me cold a lot, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. it made me standoffish and it made me the person that shut down and cut you off and all of that stuff. Um, and, and through those experiences, once I started really realizing what being grown and mature and, and the strength and vulnerability, um, I think that's what made me want to share that message. Um, because it was like, okay, if I actually show you who I am, mm -hmm. what I'm about, what I've been through, all that stuff, and I've forgiven myself of, of it already, you can't hurt me. So I, I, I literally live not with the fear of getting hurt. You know what I mean? I, wow. I'm, I'm no longer afraid of being hurt because I'm exposed. I'm open. You can see me. You can bring up whatever you want to bring up from my past. It's not going to anger me. It's not going to sadden me. It's only going to motivate me to keep going. You know, and that comes from being vulnerable, from being that open, accepting who I was, but also understanding who I am. That's it. Now, on social media, do you have people that to come at you, yeah. um, to, to dog you? Of course. Of course. But but so from what you just told me, you you perceive that you just go at that and just say, hey, it is what it is. And, Listen, and you don't take anything from that. At the end of the day, I'm me. Right. Everything. That I was, everything that I am allows me to make an impact in a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. And you have to understand when you're trying to make a difference, it's going to be people, you know, who 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 are who feel a way about it. But why would they come for you? But you're the heart healer. Why would they come for Rob Hill Sr.? OK. Um, if if. I, I honestly believe it's it's a, it's a self thing. It, has, okay. it literally has nothing to do with me. It literally has nothing to do with me is what how they perceive themselves. Most people just want you to be OK with their crap. Just mm -hmm. be OK with it. This is me. It's how I am. It's take me as I am. Blah, blah, blah. What I try to do is challenge people to say, OK, understand who I am, but contribute to who I'm trying to be. Don't I don't want anybody in my life to just accept me for this. Challenge me to grow. Challenge me to get better. If I don't keep my word, hold me accountable. You know what I mean? Like, I like it. You know. I think that that is the ultimate challenge. Like, why would, don't just take me as I am today. That means you don't see anything for me. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I, I wouldn't want to live that way. Um, and I get it that some men say I'm challenging the status quo. Like, I'm making it hard on them. Or I'm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and I, blah, blah. Well, I'm sorry. I, I personally <laughs> am under the impression that if anything I say ruins your chance with her, then you never really have one. Mm, come on, you know? somebody. Or, 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 if, or if anything I do makes her... You know, that to me, right. you, you, you can't get mad. It's like if you were only in this room and you thought it was the best room ever, right? right? Mm -hmm. And then somebody's like, yo, it's the whole house. You know what I mean? The right. person that you were playing in that room is going to hate whoever showed you the whole house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yes. know? And that's just life. So, and because I'm comfortable was, with that. Because it was more. They're able to they be want exposed you to, yeah. to more. They, they, they are not confident enough in themselves to believe that even if you saw the whole house, you would want to come back to the room. Mm. That don't have nothing to do with Rob. Wow. You get what I'm saying? That yeah. don't have nothing to do with me. That's everything to do with you. 
you I don't care. If I'm in a room with somebody mm-hmm. and you show them the whole house, I guarantee you I've contributed enough in that room to that they'll want to come back. And even if they want to experience the whole house, they're coming back so I can experience it with them. Wow. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But a lot of people don't see it that way. That's huge. I like the way you put that. Rob mm-hmm. Hill Sr. right here on the Victoria Washington Experience. Thank you. I've heard many people just continue, I, and I hate this. I, you know, hate is a strong word, mm-hmm. but I must use the word hate because people think that overnight success happened to you. Right. And I always tell people it takes work. It takes time. Mm-hmm. What we didn't see, th- that's what he was doing. He was writing, you right. know, and, and I heard <laughs> you say you was writing for those like three years in a row mm-hmm. and, and continue to 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 become um, great at your craft. Mm-hmm. What does it do to you when people say, hey, you're overnight success? I, I just I don't think that they understand the process of success, mm-hmm. you know, and I can't even knock them for it. In this world, you do have people confuse notoriety, popularity with success. So when you get popular, they automatically think you're successful. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean your money's right. That doesn't mean you have any real income. That doesn't mean you have any assets or anything like that. You know, that just means people know you now. Right. You know, and they think that that is the key because for some people, club hosting is as big as it gets. Mm-hmm. You know, getting that check, that's what they, you know, they think that that's real money. That's what life is. Right. You know, so when when they talk about it, no, there's no way I can overnight. I, I, I've i been on panels with people or I've spoken at schools that I probably wouldn't even got accepted to. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't just get that because some people are, are, are post. You have to really make a difference. You have to really get through and actually prove yourself. My first speaking engagement, I got one hundred and fifty dollars and I had to drive nine hours one way to speak at the University of Clemson. I had one hundred and fifty dollars. I had to pay for transportation. I had to pay for my whole hotel. I had to get there. All that stuff, and literally, right. just to speak for an hour to maybe twelve people, you know. And this is stuff. It's stuff that I experienced or went through. Just even the Thousand Kings Walk, you know, and putting that all together. I didn't use a gun GoFundMe. I had to actually show people my work. I did fifty plus speaking engagements. I put forty thousand miles on my car in six months driving to these places because I, I didn't have a budget for air for airfare right you know what i'm saying but this is stuff that people don't see now granted you don't have to see it you don't even have to respect it just don't try to put an asterisk by my spot wow you know what i'm saying you don't wow. have to see just don't try to put an asterisk by my spot you weren't there nobody i was in the navy on deployments in the arabian sea writing putting mm-hmm. my message out by 9 a.m every morning you know and right. it's, it's, it's a couple thousand people that can uh, attest to that it came every day on time. You know, I'm literally on a deployment. I have other work to do. We're literally working 13 or, you know, and you, and, and you get off work and you're stuck on that boat. But I was right and I was committed to my craft. I was doing that. This is stuff that I know I earned this spot. That's why it doesn't hurt me when people say stuff like that. I know I work for it. Now, granted, if I doubted my work, mm-hmm. if I doubted my process, then maybe I would be more inclined to prove myself to people like that. I'm trying to get more disciplined like you. And I say that because I started out with this thing. I was like, you know what? I'm going to send out something positive. Mm-hmm. Although a motivational speaker is not who I'm trying to become. Mm-hmm. I'm a radio personality. Right. But, you know, to also send out a positive message you on my end, motivate. I think. Oh, well, thank you. You guys motivate. For real. Radio <laughs> people, it carries. Your voice carries. You thank know? you. Thank you. And I try to put out a positive message every day. But see, I'm not that dedicated as far as waking up at a certain time. I'm always up like at 5, 30, 6 a.m. anyway. Mm-hmm. But to to constantly put that message out there every day to to send, have an email list, because you start off with an email list of 20 people, people, 22. 22 people. And sending out that, that email every morning on that, in that aspect, I'm not as disciplined. But like I'm disciplined to wake up in the morning and go to the gym right, every right, morning. Right. So I think that's huge to, to be so dedicated to your craft to, to understand what it takes. Oh, um. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, for me, it was, I knew I didn't want to stay in the Navy. Mm-hmm. The Navy, I would have to go a seven-month deployment, eight-month deployment. That's time away from my son. Right. So I knew that if I didn't want to do this forever, I needed to have an exit plan. Mm-hmm. I needed to have something that I could lean on. And I would have never felt confident enough to get out of the Navy and take this chance on me and what I'm doing now if I hadn't proven it to myself those three years. I was confident. I knew that I could commit and I was disciplined enough to do something. You know what I mean? And I knew that whether nobody responded or whether 10 people responded, that I was going to do it regardless. And I was going to keep getting better. If nobody responded, guess what I took that as? You ain't get through to them. Write better. 
If wow. Teal People responded, okay, write more about that. Touch on that a little bit more. I was studying everything. You know what I mean? I was studying everything, and that was the only way I solidified this, you know? And it wasn't easy. First book, 500 copies. It took me like eight months to sell. Second book, no publisher. I heard at least literally 200 no's just off that book alone from publishers and agents and, and all they that. they screaming yes. <laughs> I literally put out my third and fourth book last year. Uh, mm-hmm. One is called I Got You. Um, it's a print book, and the other one is called uh, The Audacity of a Good Heart. It's an audio. Mm-hmm. Sold it on iTunes. The, the I Got You, it hit number one on Amazon, um, bestsellers for relationships, um, interpersonal communication, so two categories, and then um, The Audacity of a Good Heart, it was number one on audiobooks. You know, it made Billboard's top ten for gospel albums. I didn't even know it can be considered a gospel right. album. Right, yeah. But I did those all on my own. That was my hustle. That was me tapping into the people who were paying attention, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, and trying to satisfy them. I knew some people didn't read. So how do I reach people who don't read? Audio. Mm-hmm. You know, but this is stuff that, that I was literally, literally, I used to wake up. I knew Barnes & Noble opened at 9. I would get there at 845. Mm-hmm. I want to beat the workers there. But I had to put myself in the atmosphere. If I want to be an author, I got to be around. I got to visualize this. You know what I mean? I right. got to sit in here and look at these books and say, mine is worthy of going on that shelf too. You know? So it, it's just that little stuff, that having that little vision that kind of, opened it up, but allowed me to be in a position for this to happen. You're healing hearts just, just, just right now speaking. And I think your message is even touching me because when you start out in any field and I, I listen to you when you say the, the first 10, if you even reached 10 people, you felt like you got through to someone. Mm-hmm. And then of course you're growing that crowd. You're growing and, and growing for yourself on the inside and growing as far as inspiring people. And I think that's so huge. And you're healing my heart right now. You know, just listening just is is motivation. And it's a beautiful thing. Now, this quote that you say, first of all, you got to tell me, how do you even come up with these quotes? Um, I just try to make sure it's true. And I go off of whatever I feel. I just don't share in real time. Mm. So if I feel it today and I write it today, I won't share it for like a month. Um, Why not? uh, Because I want to be responsible. I know people are paying attention. Uh So if I write it and I share it based purely off of emotion, it Mm -hmm. may come off mean, it may come off bias, it may come off not as well-rounded as I want my pieces to be. And even still, some of them do come off that, but I feel like the raw emotion is necessary. But I'm never in a rush to share it. I have so much material, I kind of backlog it, you know. And then on some day, like say it's raining, so I know what type of message people need when it's raining. So I'll give them that one. It'll be a little longer. You know, say it's Sunday and it's a Friday, something quick. You know, um, and, and that's literally just studying, mm. just studying the people. So if it's sunny, you send out a quick message. You want something upbeat. You want to keep that good energy going. I'm mm-hmm. not going to send you a broken hearted message on a beautiful, sunny day. Mm-hmm. OK, that's going to bring you down. Right. Right. You know, so on a sunny day, it's more upbeat. You know, it's more, hey, go for it. You know, find a way, that type of stuff. And then if it's raining or if it's at night or if I know love and hip hop just went off and emotions <laughs> are high, you know, because that show right. stirs emotions up. Right. Emotions are high. I drop one, and it's a little longer. So it's about knowing, like, what's on the TV. What's, what's, what's I don't even watch TV. the show. I know when the show ends. I need to know when the show ends because that's when social media is at its highest. Yeah. If you pay attention, award shows, all this stuff. So when an award show go off, people are still up. Boom. Oh, Beyonce ending the show? Perfect. I got a post for that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, right. just, it's, just, it's just studying that field. If you see them grinding, either contribute to that or get out the way. You don't have to understand every single step of the journey, but at least respect the focus. Always remember, the more value you add to the vision, the more time you get on the mission. Can't force you to support where I'm going. I just ask that you don't distract me while I'm working. Rob Hill Sr. Yeah, I mean that every word of it, too. Every wow. word of it. Um, a lot of people, even when I was just starting out, People would be like, you know, when I got out of the Navy mm-hmm. um, and I hit a rough patch, of course, it wasn't a smooth transition. You know what I mean? But when I got out, they're like, you know, what's going to be a real job? I know you want to write, but like, what's going to be a real job? Mm-hmm. You know, I know you say you want to go places and speak, but like, what's going to be a real job? Like, what are you going to do? Right. And I was like, that is my real job. That is what I'm going to do. And people would be like, yeah, OK. You know what I mean? Like, right. yeah, OK, you better go back to school. You better do this. You know what I mean? Because, you, you know. Who wants to hear somebody, who wants to read a book by somebody who doesn't have a degree? Who wants to read a book by somebody, you know what I mean, who flunked out of school? 
well, it turns out that there's a lot more people in this country in this world without degrees than it is with. <laughs> that, that and you is mean true. to tell me that they should all feel helpless because they don't have it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That so is true. I was just running into a lot of people who were saying stuff, and I'm just like, look, you ain't got to agree with where I'm going. Just get that negativity out of my way. Respect don't try to hustle. distract me with it. You know what I mean? Let me fight for what I'm fighting for. And if I fall, it doesn't fall on you. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Just go ahead. I know how to pick myself back up. So. The company you keep can and will affect the opportunities you meet. What challenges have you have you run into when it comes I to that? I started out with a group of guys in my old neighborhood. We called ourselves the Young Assassins. Now, granted, we weren't killing nothing. Right. But, you know, getting a couple fights, you know, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I realized that when I was around them, I had different experiences. Cops would come around, fights would happen, different stuff. But then if I was around different people, I w- other stuff would happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, was, it wasn't until I started really assessing what people and what energy they were bringing in my life and what happened when I was around them that I realized who was good for me and who wasn't. Um, I just honestly believe, um, they, they say, uh, you know, they call money currency, right? And right. they call it currency because it flows, right? And I started looking at the hands it was flowing in. When I was broke, I was around the same broke people. You know what I mean? Right, right. But when I started trying to even make a living for myself, I was around different people. You know what I mean? And and things were flowing different, you know? But it was all, and the opportunities have grown, you know? But it was all because I was willing to put myself in different company. A lot of people, you know, they they equate keeping it real to, you know, just staying with the same people the whole time. Now, granted, it's cool if they're like-minded, but I think it's dumb if you're trying to get somewhere, you know what I mean? And, and, and you understand that that circle has, you know, you know, some people that I was around didn't see life beyond the neighborhood. Hmm. If you don't see life behind the neighborhood and I'm trying to inspire the world, what are we really doing? Right. You know what I mean? Like we can hang out on occasion. I'm not saying I got to cut you off, but it's just like I'm trying to get somewhere, you know? And I understand that if you're not trying to get there too, or at least trying to get somewhere as well, we're going to bump heads. Mm. What I'm seeing, what I'm trying to do is always going to seem unrealistic to you. You know what I mean? But I don't need to be around people who feel like it's unrealistic. I need to be around people who say, yo, you can do that. That's for you. You know what I mean? Because that is going to keep me going. Rob Hill, senior right here on the Victoria Washington Experience. Before you get out of here, we must talk about your foundation. Okay. A Thousand Kings. Tell me about that. Um, When I was growing up, <clears throat> there was, like I said, I come from a neighborhood full of males. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of men. Not a lot of people who are there to guide you and actually show you what life. It was either you was an athlete, you was a drug dealer, you got a lot of girls. That was basically how you earn your respect. You know what I mean? And, and, and it was frustrating for me. So I remember the Million Man March happening, but my mom had to work or something like that. We couldn't afford to go. We was in Virginia. It was in D.C. And uh, I was just praying like it was a man in my life to take me. Nobody took me not knocking it that's just the way life is but i always wanted to relive that and also you know to impact young people the way i because i remember seeing get on the bus and it was a dude with his son and you know what i mean it was a lot of different personalities but they were all going because they was all about to stand for something um and i felt like you know by doing just a scholarship contest but asking people all over the world to donate to this and i was showing it i was documenting it all every name that domain i put it out there you know um because I wanted people to feel a part of it, too. And so with the foundation, it's really um, our pillars are inspire, impact, and influence. And it's really just to, we want to push people to live extraordinary lives, young people. We want them to feel like they're kings and they're queens. And, you know, me being a young male, I just chose king because I, I want, you know, my young my young uh, kings to feel and walk in that light. Um, so with the foundation, it's really just a community thing. It's really trying to encourage at a very grassroots level. You know, it's not like we're going to dump and just, you know, throw y'all some turkeys and we know y'all don't have power in the house to cook them. It's not that type of thing. You know what I mean? It's right. it's instilling responsibility. It's instilling duty, you know, honor, you know, that type of stuff into people, you know. I think that is huge. Uh, we have a lot of foundations out there. And, you know, you have some that's the same, some that's different, mm-hmm. you know, but to me, there are not a lot of foundations where touch, we touch on young men. To make a difference, we have a lot of kids' foundation. And it was a to me, it was a timely thing because mm-hmm. I, I started my foundation 
in uh, 2012. Mm-hmm. That's when I first started it. And uh, but now you got the My Brother's Keeper initiative, which I've um, you know become a part of. You know, from the White House. You know, I, I think the awareness is is raising, um, and, and, and it's very necessary. You know, it's right. very necessary. We have to start. You know, teaching them that it's more to life than turn up. I love to turn up. We all young. We love to have fun. Mm-hmm. But there's more to it. You know, and yes. turning up is so much better when you know stuff is taken care of. Come on now. When you know it's <laughs> you taken better. care of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's so much better. Yes. You know, when you're free to really, like, you have something to celebrate. You're not right. just drinking to get away from the pain. You know what I mean? So I, I just want to be able to show them. And I always felt like if I waited until I got it all together to try to give back, I would be too late. You just heard from Rob Hill Sr., Right here on the Victoria Washington Experience. Rob, please tell everyone where they can reach you. Um, my website is uh, www.robhillsenior.com. It's R-O-B-H-I-L-L-S-R.com. Um, and social media is the same thing. R-O-B-H-I-L-L-S-R. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, his site, at Rob Hill Senior. R-O-B-H-I-L-L-S-R. And also myself, you can contact me via Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at the Vicky. That's T H E V I C K I I I. Three eyes on the end. Rob here, senior. I appreciate you. You inspire so many, and even in this interview, you have inspired me. And I just, I just wish you luck, uh, blessings, and I know that it's going to happen for you. It's happening Thank now. You. Thank you. Thank you. Know, I appreciate it's, it's that. It's the law of attraction. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.